One of the take-homes from our visit with Dr. Dwayne Beck was that we should be aiming to imitate nature in our fields. Well, if we're imitating nature in our fields, shouldn't we really be doing that with our soil tests as well? Let's circle back to my visit with Dr. Rick Haney, whose research focus has been just that. Prior to my academic career, when I was farming, I studied nature. I always noticed the grass and the ditches look better than the pasture. Yeah. And you know, you're observing these things over yeah. time. And so I became a big fan of how nature does things. And so my, my entire research program has been modeled on how does nature do it? Okay. Can we mimic it in the lab to the best of our ability within the limitations of a lab setting? And so all the methods we developed have been trying to mimic nature in the lab. There was a, a U.S. scientist named Birch in the uh, late 50s and early 60s, and he had something called the Birch effect, and that was the drying and rewetting method. But he didn't. He was doing long-term incubations and seeing those differences, and he didn't have an application for it. He knew it was real. He knew it happened, and he. But he didn't. At the time, wasn't able to pull that together. The technology had wasn't there. The Russians were ahead of us in soil biology in the 40s and 50s and 60s. I mean, right. they were really pushing the envelope. Yes. And a lot of the things that I read in graduate school was from their stuff. Well, they were doing water extraction and looking at carbon of all things. They knew about this, but nobody really followed up on it. And, but the, the, and this is important, we didn't have the technology back then that we do now. It literally hit me one day a few years ago, and I was in the shower, and I was thinking, it rains water. That's the natural system. It doesn't rain two molar KCL. It doesn't rain one molar KCL. Okay. That's, nature doesn't do that. And the biggest aspect of our soil testing protocols and our methods is we're asking the soil to tell us what's going on. We're not beating it up with chemistry and, and physical stuff and saying, you know, and demanding what we want to know out of this one isolated thing. Yeah. It's funny because when I, when I go around the country and give talks and, and there's farmers, you know, in the audience and, and I'll say, well, it rains water. Why aren't we using that as an extractant? It's obvious to them. But sometimes in science, we get so focused that, you know, with all this chemistry, especially when I was developing the soil extractant, you know, boy, you can get lost in that forest real easy. So this is not something that we just made up overnight. This has been around a long time. In the last 10 years, the technology's come to the point where we can now access these things with these machines, the Solvita method. Yeah. I mean, that all had to come together, and it did come together. But the integration of the data and the integration of the methods is what's new.